been a while, welcome back to Mega Man X4. In this video today we'll be taking on two bosses, and then a boss exclusive to X's storyline. Frost Walrus, he protects the secret web which lies inside the snow... Oh. Okay. Hi Blizzard Buffalo from Mega Man X3, what are you doing back there? So unfortunately I kind of skipped the first third of this stage. I uh, take a path that you can only access once you have Web Spider's power. Uh, you're not going to miss much. We still meet up with the enemies halfway through the stage, so that's good. This part is perfect though for filling up your energy tanks and your weapon tanks once you get them. We'll be getting the weapon tank later on in this stage. The only way for X to access that ledge is to use Web Spider's Lightning to create a wall and then jump off it. Zero will double jump up there later on when he gets that ability. But it's around here where I realize, oh, I missed a heart tank and skipped kind of the level. So, let's go back. Hey, we got two lives out of the deal. That's not bad, right? The main two enemies in this stage. And here's the heart tank hidden by a block of ice that you need to burn with the fire web. Uh, the main two enemies in this game are the snowmen and the yetis. Snowmen aren't anything to write home about, they just run into you and then explode. The yetis will stand back, hit up a sheet of ice to try and hit you from a range, or lob a snowball at you. I kind of feel these snow sec the snow platform sections here kind of slowly game down though, where you gotta wait. I mean, I know it's a platformer and all, but... We'll see later up, there'll, there'll be another gimmick to that. So now we have to traverse the platforms which will eventually dissipate, all the while moving above spike cell ants to kill us. As you see the platforms kind of dissolving, and I almost fit it there. There's a secret hidden up here and you need web, light, uh, web lightning for. I don't know what it's called, but I do know that if you load a save or hit restart, you start with four lives now instead of, I think it's three, so not bad. Useless in the long run, but it's not bad. Can't believe I got hit by that snowman. And there we go. So we all know how ice is lighter than air, and that's why these ice platforms are rising. The main idea here is to traverse this without getting caught on the ceiling above, uh, where they can instantly crush you. And we're on to our mini-boss for this stage. Hey, Chill Penguin from Mega Man X! Boy, Frost Walrus doesn't like any of the previous ice bosses. So our mini-boss has two forms here. First form is his claw. Um, that'll turn to a fist, hit the ground, slide into the wall on the side, or just lazily flow around like he is now. Anytime he pounds the ground, uh, icicles will fall down if they're present. Not to form two. This is just pattern recognition, just staying out of the way. And then every time he fires his spikes, it alternates between um, diagonal attacks and then um, cardinal directions. I have a problem where if I try and show off a boss instead of just unlocking it by using its weakness, I take shit tons of damage. You'll see here. And I would not recommend hitting the boss while he's that close to the ground, because then he'll just... He may have the possibility of turning to the fist and smashing you like that. But hey, we can move on to stage two now. Ready. I just adore the music in some parts. In some levels, it's kind of blasé. Uh, in other levels, they really uh, ramp it up, I feel. In Area 1, there was background noise with all the blizzards and stuff, which sounded really cool. Here, I don't know. Feels like a base. It feels like I'm infiltrating Shadow Moses now. No. 
So the idea behind this, if you want to traverse areas, is that you have to find the ice blocks with bombs inside of them that'll blow up top and bottoms for you to give you more room to shoot at. And I am terrible with these little projectile guys. But hey, there's a weapon tank frozen up above us. Let's go ahead and collect that. Now, anytime we pick up a weapon uh, energy part, some of it will go to a weapon that has low energy, and the rest will go inside the tank, which we can use for later. So that Blizzard Phoenix thing uh, freezes part of the stage, forming icicles and then freezing uh, enemies. It's kind of neat, but at the same time it also freezes the ground and makes it turn into like an ice platformer level. And eh, I don't need to slip and slide around while I'm doing this. There's about four of them in the stage, I believe. They come in somewhat intervals. But here I think I wanted to show it off. Even the little flying guy got frozen. I didn't notice that. There's a big energy pickup. And we're on to the boss for the stage. So try and act surprise, Frost Walrus is weak to Fire Tower. His main form of attack right now is to uh, get close to you and then slide into the wall. And if you're climbing on the wall while he slams into it, it'll uh, knock you down and force you into him. So the idea is to jump and dash away before he hits it. When he gets to about half health, he'll start second phase. And can I blame that on him hitting the wall? So this is what happens when Frost Walrus hits 50%. He uh, creates a giant ice diamond, and then that splinters off into spikes. I believe the spikes don't hit you, they all stay on the ground. Oh no, he does this, where he launches himself towards you. He'll also fire his two icicle spikes on his back, which come down like that, nothing to worry about. But hey, that's Frost Walrus down. I don't think I've ever gotten it to trap enemies besides the boss that it's weak uh, or it's good against. We'll see that coming up. So we had an ice level, we had a fire level, why not have a sewer level? Let's move on to the marine base and jet stingray. Jet Stingray stage is a little fun. Uh, it's the only stage really get this... I'm just going to call it a hover bike. Who cares? Uh, you'll use it for both areas 1 and 2. And this is the only time in the game you'll get to use it. You'll have enemies on hover bikes. You'll have those little airplanes come at you. you got bombs. You can also dash with it. If you dash in air, it'll keep you at your height until it wears off which is nice for traversing some areas. You'll see it comes and bites me in the ass, though. These platforms right here will explode if you touch them. So if you can afford to, jump over them. But as you see, because I jumped, there's a little cooldown before you can jump again, and I ate a, a pit. 
So if you can, I would recommend just taking the explosion damage uh, so you don't screw yourself out of a jump. Um, but you can jump over those and avoid the damage. Once again, another stage that has great music. I love the soundtrack for this stage. You can also dash like that, but oh, I almost ate it there too. And then for a final FU, they throw more pillars at you to help trap you. Uh, since this is a forced side-scrolling stage, if you get trapped like that, it'll kill you. On the bright side, we only got half a sewer level, now we moved on to the docks, I guess. And hey look, there's the boss. So he'll surround himself with ground hunters and then toss them at you. Nothing too dangerous or difficult to worry about, although you can get rid of him, we'll see that coming up soon. So if you get tired of him, you can just ram directly into him. That's enough damage to immediately make him disappear. And then there's going to be an energy tank coming up here that I'm going to try and get... Ah, uh, I didn't quite make it. That jump, by the way, is probably the worst jump in the game. If you jump too high and dash, you'll shoot right over the boxes and miss the energy tank. If you jump and dash too low, you'll end up uh, clipping yourself like I did. you got to get it just right. And unfortunately, there are no checkpoints in this stage either, which means I had to start all the way back from the beginning of Area 2. Note that I did ram into him twice, and that'll have no effect on him when we meet up in the boss fight later, unfortunately. There we go, though. I collected the energy tank, and we can move on. There's our full life up. And then, as you heard, there's an extra noise on top of the standard health collecting noise. That just means your energy tank's getting filled up. It was impressive that he found him. The game told you at his boss screen that he escaped to the sea. I wonder where he went. So here's the gimmick to Jet Stingray. He'll sit in a corner, fire off ground hunters, and then charge at you, or he'll just charge at you right away. Unfortunately, there's no way to really know which one he's going to do beforehand. So you either have to have quick reaction time, which, there we go. When he gets to about 50%, he'll uh, add another attack to the mix. You can stand there, wait until he comes down like that after he shoots out all his ground hunters. Uh, not only will the ice freeze him in place, uh, but it'll also make sure to destroy all the ground hunters too. Here comes his second attack, which I kind of screwed up on. He'll try and suck you in, which you need to dash away from, and then he'll charge right at you. The problem is, once again, he doesn't telegraph if he's going to drop down, or if he's going to uh, come at you in an angle. So you gotta just kind of stand in the right position. Here I am confirmed for bad and using a health tank. He didn't give me that much back, but I don't want to die. Uh, when he gets to the yellow bar, his ground hunters get replaced by those red ones, and they will immediately drop down where you are, and then, uh, as you may have seen, they kind of just patrol exactly where you are. Unfortunately, I ran out of Frost Tower here, so I'm going to be confirmed for bad once again, and we're going to use the Weapon Tank to give us one extra charge. 
He does have one final attack where he'll shoot up to the top of the screen and then come down at you from the top. Just frost tower where you stand, you'll be fine. And hey, that's Jet Stingray. See that about every weapon that is effective against enemies on grounds and floors? I don't know. X, turn the game console off right now. So now we're gonna go and have a boss fight with Colonel. Memorial Hall. I can't wait to see the stage. And oh, Ready. um, I don't think Capcom finished the stage at all. No music, no background, just the floor. Is there a boss? Hello, Capcom. Did we forget something? Oh, there we go. There's the background. So Colonel kind of has a pattern. Tell me if you can figure it out immediately. So that's all Colonel's gonna do for you. You'll phase out, try and smack you where you stand. So I recommend avoiding that by dash jumping. And then when he stands back to uh, fire those beams at you, it's always top, bottom, top. You just dash underneath the bar, the top ones, jump over the bottom. He has a weakness to lightning web. Unfortunately, it doesn't count when the the web shoots out. It's only when it forms. So you can shoot it right through him and miss completely. Uh, it also doesn't seem to do any more than the X Buster does. So I just recommend using the X Buster, especially now since your lightning web has charges. Uh, you can run out pretty quickly. X. To fire the X Buster, hit the square button. And if you ever need to get a hold of him, all you have to do is call frequency 140.85. So that's it for this video. Uh, next video we'll be moving on to the next two bosses and hopefully we'll have everyone's favorite Texan with us. We'll see you then.